Hi, this is Patty Butcher. I'm getting ready to do a dream big panel. It'll be my second one. And I quilted one a little while ago and had several people asking what my process was or how, how do I quilt it? Do I need to start at the center and work my way out? Things like that. So I'm getting ready to start another one and I figured I'd take little videos here and there of how I'm doing it. First thing is I'm working with the patterns from Wasatch Quilting um, and I got them in the Masters Club for November. She gives you a nice PDF of all the designs and how they should lay out. So I've got the printout here that shows the orientation for the patterns and as I flip a page you can see each pattern has a number to it. So you will be um, getting the numbers coordinated with the block or the, the section you're working on at that time. So what I had to do was I had to load my quilt so that it's in the correct orientation. So this section right here is going to coordinate to this pattern right there which it happens to be number one so let me get that out of the way and I've just laid some threads out I've got four different colors of glide I may add another one or two in here as I go but this these are my color choices so far this is the gray panel and I know it's kind of boring for some, but I'm going to make it as a gift for somebody that has a black and white room that I think this would be very striking on the wall. Okay, I've got my thread loaded, and I'm going to be starting with this dark gray. So I'm going to be working on all these leaves right here that are going to use that colorway, and then I will switch to my shadow thread which is almost a black thread and I'll do these two outer sections um, and then I'll be able to advance and switch threads and continue to um, work my way through the quilt. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say design sew quilt and I'm starting a new project. Yes I already have a work in progress so I'm going to work my way through that. Now I'm going to actually be marking each block and then placing the pattern. So I'm going to choose block pattern and I'm going to choose mark on quilt. So I'm going to move my needle down so that I can see, um, you know, I'm closer to the quilt so I can mark my placement precisely. And I've got my clicker on so I can use that to quickly go along and get the block shapes. And I'm just going to go straight across the top so I can say close block. And here I'm going to say finished. And the pattern that I want I know is number two because I looked at my um, my plan, my layout that she gave us. There it is right there. So I'm going to say continue and it's going to place it and I'm going to have to manipulate. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring my scale up. We're going to go to 100% and then move it around. We'll have to modify from here. 100% is not always going to work. You might have to, you know, modify it some. So I'm going to get it as close as I can and then I'm going to go to my editing screen here and I will start distorting. I want it to fill as much of that shape as possible. Especially here where there's going to be more, um, another pattern is going to come up right next to it. So that looks pretty good. 
I'm going to say finished. So my crosshairs, oops, I want to, I want to modify here a little bit. So I'm going to go back in, modify pattern, go to my editing screen here, and I'm going to just, when I use distort to pull that up, it's placing it above where I want up here. So let's just play with a uh, magnet tool and we're going to repel. So right there, I just see how I just pushed it slightly away from that line. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say finished, finished, and sew quilt. Choose my pattern to sew, continue, and let it move to its start point. Okay, so the first section has finished quilting. I'm going to zoom in on it, on it, and you can see there that it is finished. I'm using a loftier bat than I did last time. This is some bamboo, a thick bamboo that I had, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, I got more drawing and shrinkage than I was expecting, so I'm going to have to adjust my pattern sizes down a little bit so that I'm not getting... I'm not overshooting my block area. Okay, so now I'm ready to start marking off my second segment. So I'm going to say add block, add block, standard, mark on quilt. I have my add another block disabled. If you don't, you won't have to go through all those steps. But I do have mine disabled. I can go in and turn it back on if I choose. And I may go ahead and do that since I will be adding lots of blocks here. I think the hardest part about these quilts is figuring out where some of the petals change direction. Okay, I'm just going to say close block there. Because some of them blend so much, I'm going to say no. Some of them blend so well that it's hard to tell, um, you know, where one petal ends and the next one starts. So I'm going to say add pattern, block pattern, use current block. I messed something up that somewhere that I had to go through all those steps. I'm looking for number three now. Okay, so there's Dream Big 3, the pattern that I just marked out. I'm going to say continue, and I'm going to modify it to get it to fit better. Bring it up to 100%. It's over my block area, so I'm going to back my scale down a little bit. Remember, I said I overshot my pattern, or my block, because I, I had so much draw in. So, I am going to have to keep that in mind when I'm sizing my stuff. I want this to be taller to fill the, pl the space a little bit better there. I'm not concerned about the top going off of the quilt at all, or out of, out of the boundary there. I'm more concerned with it going into the next, the next section. So I'm gonna scooch that over a little bit. Oops, undo what I just did. Okay, I'm gonna leave that as is. Finished, finished, sew quilt. Choose that pattern, sew quilt. Let it move to its start point. And we'll let that quilt out and then we'll resume the video. Ok, 
Okay, I just finished marking the next block, and I just want to show you that you can't always modify it by just the scale. Sometimes you have to change the height or the width of the pattern. In this case, I'm going to have to do that. So I am going to bring the scale up a little bit to fill the space a little better. But if you look there now, it needs to be elongated. So I'm going to change my height. Yes, it's distorting the pattern, but I would rather have the pattern fill the block space than the aspect ratio be correct. Um, otherwise, it's, gonna, it's not going to look right at all. Um, let's just, we're going to move it just a hair more to the top. And, oops, watch your screen there. I'm happy with how it's falling into, the, into place here. I might change my width just a smidge. And I think I'm going to leave it as that. Because remember, I had a lot of drawing, so I don't want to make it fill the space too much more. So on this, um, I marked out this block and brought the pattern in. I scaled it up and I changed the height and width, but I still want to work with it a little bit more. Um, so here's where I'm going to be using my shape shift. This is a really cool tool if you guys have not used it yet. You've got this target area here, that which is that circle, and you can change your target size by hitting the size here and your plus or minus or you can plug in a number. I'm going to just use a four inch circle and what I want to do is I want to shift this area here without altering the sides. So I'm just going to start tapping the screen. I'm going to undo that one because I did a little bit too much there. There we go. I'm going to drag this out a little bit. And I'm going to change right there just a hair. Okay. That looks better. It fills, it fills the space a little bit more. I'm over the line just a little bit right there. So if you want to be real finicky, <laughs> I'm going to repel just right there away from the line. There we go. I'm going to undo because I don't like what it did. I'm going to undo and I'm going to change my target zone. I'm going to make it just a small area. I just want to work on that line right there. Now if I move the circle away You can see it pushed that line just away a hair. And it didn't distort into here like it was when I had that bigger target zone. Well, let's play with Magnet Tool a little bit more. So let's set it to Attract. And I'm going to pull, give myself a bigger circle, 2 inch. I'm going to just try and pull that a little bit. See how it's pulling that line? When I hold it in, well, that's over-exaggerating, so I'm going to undo those. And I'm going to finish right there. So that's a little bit on Magnet Tool and Shape Shift, if you have not used those before. Okay, so I have just finished my first pass, um, the all of my quiltable space. So I went ahead and I rolled the quilt and I've got it basted all down. So I'll go ahead and do these few petals in the light gray. I'm not going to do this just yet because I'm going to switch to another color for this, I think. 
and then I'll go ahead and work my darks out on the edge. One thing she does tell you with this particular design, the centerpiece, you don't quilt until you get the petals below done because the way the pattern works here is it's got like rays that come out. So you want those rays to fill the area. Um, so that's why you want to do these petals first. And when I get to that point, I will go ahead and, and video. All of my petals surrounding the center panel complete. So now I'm ready to mark my block for the center panel and fill that. Um, per her instructions, she, she asks you to do all the petals around the outer edge first and then do the center panel because it, the pattern has rays that you want to get to fill in the area. I marked the block and as you can see here, I tucked into those spaces between the patterns. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in the pattern. Okay, so I have the pattern brought into the center and I'm going to need to move it around a little bit and scale it up. I'm going to go ahead and just start scaling it first. And then I'm going to move and get it in better position. I'm not concerned about these rays going over my block line just yet because I'm going to use a clipping block. Oops. Undo what I just did. Enlarge it just a little bit. Move it down a little. I'm trying to get this area right here to fill in a little bit more, but it's not wanting to work for me. I'm going to move it back down a hair. I could go in if I wanted to and elongate those two right there, but that's really the only area that's short. The rest are going to tuck up in and fill. What I'm going to do now is some of my little rays are going over and outside of my block area. So I'm going to use a clipping block to cut those away. I'm going to say finished. Finished out of my pattern menu. Going into my block menu. Add edit block. Add a block. What type of block? We're going to use a clipping block this time. And then your, your next prompt is select the patterns. So it's going to be just that center pattern. Hit continue. And I'm going to use the existing block that I've already marked. So I'm going to toggle this button right here, select existing block. And I'm going to touch on that and hit continue. And that just clipped away all of the rays that were going into these other patterns. I'm going to say finished. And accept my transition of continuous and say finished again. Now I'm ready to go ahead and sew out that section.